And I do want to say, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to do this and have you all here. And I know we had a chance during bowl practice um, or at the end of the bowl game. We got to do some things live and also um, a little bit of a chance at the senior bowl. But this is a big step. And it finally felt like today out there with our guys and just the meetings that we've been having that we're actually into spring football again. And it uh, feels like it did a few years ago, all right, just normal. Uh, come in here, have a team meeting, go out there and practice, get after it, have a good first day, plenty of stuff to work on. Uh, come do media, do it live, and just get back into that routine. And I would say um, that's a big part, in my opinion, of just the process when there's a coaching change. And um, one thing we all know, like even in perfect conditions, that's difficult on players. And kind of going back to how it started, being in the indoor with the swamp cooler on or whatever the heck that thing is and six feet apart, everybody masked up, introducing the staff, doing all those things and to where we are right now, having a team meeting, getting out there, practicing, doing things like we normally do and uh, meeting tomorrow and having everything um, like we planned, like we had it planned out before. Uh, so it feels good. So anyhow, having you guys here is good. Um, few things from today, I thought we took advantage of the first practice. Uh, we did the basics, all right, just working on the fundamentals. So blocking, tackling, all right, two things that make football the greatest game, just simple, simple things. Um, and we're in helmets, you know, spider pads, uh, soft shells. So we had a chance to, to do a little bit of work that way. We'll get in the shoulder pads in a couple days. But I thought the energy and the meetings were really good. I thought the focus, which has been uh, one of the things that we've been emphasizing, has been focus with our guys just to maximize our opportunities in meetings and on the field. Uh, I thought they did that today. I thought the coaches did a good job of emphasizing the things that we needed to out of practice. Uh, and they were hustling around and they were getting to drill to drill. We finished on time. We did the things we wanted to do in practice. Uh, and we'll go back and they're going to head up there and watch the film right now and we'll study it and we'll look at the things we can improve on. And then we'll talk about it tomorrow. Uh, we'll emphasize those things and we'll come back on Wednesday and we'll get back after it again. Um, Really good work heading into spring from our guys just in the weight room and conditioning. I thought our strength staff did a really good job. And you guys saw some of the videos, saw some of the work, saw the squat night and things that we do. Uh, those guys knocked that out. Uh, we're stronger as a team than we've been. Um, as far as just the work we put in, you know, a lot of the guys have been through this now. They've, they've seen it. They've done it. Um, and so, you know, we're not having to spend so much time on some of the details that we did early on. They understand that. Now we can move on to uh, some more important things, all right, and some bigger things. And so I thought the work uh, that we did in the weight room showed up today. <clears throat> but a few highlights. Uh, Caleb Wooden, we talked about making a first impression today in the team meeting. You get one shot to do that. Caleb Wooden had a scoop and score and a pick today. DK uh, had a forced fumble. Uh, Shed Jackson, I thought he had a good first day. Um, he used his winter conditioning really, really well. Um, guys that stood out today, Derek Hall, Eku, Cam Riley, uh, Jeremiah Wright moving to O-line. It was good to see him out there and, and getting a chance to do some things coming off a knee injury. Um, Nehemiah Pritchett, I thought, went really, went really hard today and did some really good things. So it was good to have him out there. Um, we'll get to the QBs. There's a lot of them. You know, so everybody's getting a little bit of reps right now, and that's going to obviously change over time. But everybody got a little bit uh, of a piece today from the quarterback standpoint. I thought the defense was in really good shape as far as just where they are. Uh, plenty of things to work on, but at least just an understanding of what we're doing from that standpoint. Um, and then just the focus overall was really, really good. So I uh, feel good about today. And I told the team, like, that's the best part of our day, getting out there and just being on the field. We get a chance to go out there and coach these guys up and, and enjoy the opportunity to get out there and, and to get better at this game. But just being out there with them and maximizing the opportunity that we have uh, as far as that time goes, uh, it was fun. It was enjoyable. And I thought the guys uh, really took uh, what we've been talking about leading up to practice to heart and went out there and, and tried to make this first day um, really, really good and uh, and stand out. Everybody's trying to stand out in some way. but. Uh, Anyhow, with that, questions? <clears throat> uh, Bill Cameron with the drive on ESPN 106.7. Go 
ahead and talk about quarterback, just the plan with that many, mm -hmm. how, you know, how quickly you want to try to get, get someone over there. Yeah, well, probably not as quickly as everybody else wants, right? Everybody wants to know. And um, there's a lot of other reps that are not team reps that we get to evaluate. So your individual drills, your one-on-ones, um, routes on air, all those things. You know, we're looking at every single thing. Everything's uh, on film. So these guys, you know, their life's like documentary right now. I mean, we're going to watch every single thing they do. And <clears throat> through the first scrimmage, so these first seven practices, they're going to split reps. Some guys get a little bit more some days. TJ got more reps today. D. Davis got some reps in there. Holden got some reps. Robbie got some reps. Um, Zach Calzada got some reps in there. Uh, Trey Lindsey, Sawyer, you know, so there's guys in there that are getting reps and some more than others today, and that might change here in a couple days. You might see another guy get a few more reps, and we're going to try to balance that out till we get into the scrimmage, let them play, and then we'll start to, to figure it out from there. Um, at that point, some guys will get a little bit more than others, but you want to you wanna try to be as fair as possible through these 15 practices if guys are competing and they're doing a good job, if they're all doing well and they're all improving, then you want to give them as many reps as you can, but you want to also see some guys separate at some point. It's not going to happen today, but over the course of the next uh, three or four practices, you're going to see that. And then we'll go in that scrimmage, see what they do, and, and we'll start making decisions after that. But I'll just say this, like through spring, um, at the end of spring, we're going to evaluate where we are. We're going to see, all right, what did each quarterback do? Um, who led well? Who, who executed well? Who prepared well? And then that's going to lead us into summer. And then, you know, where do we go from there? So we just take it in stages. And every time I've had a, a, a quarterback decision to make, uh, I've utilized a process like that. And at the end of spring, when you have conversations with the players, with their coaches, and then the head coach, uh, you're going to see who's really going to put in the time in the summer before they get into fall camp. And there's a lot of improvement that's made in the summer when guys know exactly what it is they need to work on. Ron, Jason Caldwell, inside the Auburn Tigers. We'll, we'll talk to the but how would you describe kind of his style and philosophy on defense and, and kind of what people expect? <clears throat> Well, I, I would say the philosophy, um, you know, there was a lot of good things I thought we did last year. And, and there's, there's some things we'll simplify, and there's some things that we got to get better at, and there's some things that we'll add. Um, let me talk more about Coach Schmetting, like just as a coach. I mean, here's the one thing about him. He's very detailed. Um, he's, he's a great communicator. Uh, when he's talking about some type of subject, he, he's done the work and the research on it to really understand it. Um, he sees things on the field that he can correct immediately, and he's got good buzzwords and coaching points to get that done. Uh, they're going to go back in the film room tonight, and they're going to debrief, and he's going to have a plan coming out of that with a purpose tomorrow of what they're going to get done. You know, So that's the thing about Coach Schmetting that I appreciate is the way he operates. Um, if there's something that we're not doing well, he'll change it, or he'll find a way to make it better. If there's something that we need to add, he'll add it. If there's something we need to take away because we're not, we don't need it or we're not going to be good at it, he's going to take it away. Um, but he's always constantly searching for something to get better at. <clears throat> you know, he's a curious guy. That's the one thing I like. Like, he's curious. He's, he's always looking for ways to improve, and uh, I think it's going to help our guys. And I've seen it in meetings. I've seen how he teaches. Uh, we did tackling today, and so he taught tackling and did a great job with that. Went out there, executed on the field, and, you know, that stuff shows up. And I think great teachers, uh, when they get in the classroom and they explain what it is we're about to do and we go out there and execute it, you know, that's what great teachers get. They get the execution in football. They get the results when you go out there and work on it. So that remains to be seen. We actually go out there and play, but at least from a practice standpoint and where we are right now and the things I've seen him do, um, you know, he's very good at that. That will apply to, to the game when we get a chance to go out there and, and actually play somebody. But I've worked with him before. I've seen him do it. I know how he operates. Um, you know, he's very thoughtful. He helps me out. He thinks about a lot of things that I think about that can help us as a team. 
And so you know, he brings a lot of value from that standpoint. Brian? Uh, oh, which one's Scopes? Okay. Uh, Brian <coughs> Stoltz, Brian Stoltz, Uh Is there anything you learned uh, over the last year about yourself and as a coach that you can take into this year to kind of improve and keep on growing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, yeah, there's a lot. And we actually talk about this in staff meetings all the time. And it's not like not about me, but just about things that we learn. I think that's the greatest exercise you can have when you have a group of people working together is, you know, you go do something significant, like let's say for a, you have a football season, for example. All right, so you have this, this season of 13, 14, 15 games, whatever you're playing. And then you get to go back and talk about what you learned from it, from every single guy. And you get a whole different perspective. You all went through the same thing, but everybody saw it differently. All right? And I take that information, and I always have it. I always got it on my desk. I always go back to it and look at some of the stuff that we said so we don't forget it. Um, and a lot of those things, for me, as we go through it, you know, I put my, my thoughts when someone else is talking in there and it's kind of like written in there, you know, where my thoughts come in because someone's uh, taking the notes on it. And I try to sit there and, and see, all right, where was I at at that point? You know, what was I thinking? And then where am I at now? And the, the one thing I've learned over time is just to, just to simplify things. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot. There's always a lot to do. There's always a lot of things happening. There's always a lot of directions that you can get pulled and all that. And much like I tell our players, all right, try to practice what you preach a little bit, but just simplifying your life and just honing in on the things that matter and then trying to be really good at those and handling the other things that you need to. Um, and so there's a lot. There's a lot coming here that uh, I've learned in a year of being in the new place and um, not just from the environment that we play in and, and the atmosphere and all those things like that, but just where we are, who we're with, the people that we're surrounding ourselves with, how we get those people here, uh, there's a lot. But I still think you got to keep the main thing the main thing. And um, to me, that's one of the most important things that we all can take away from whatever it is we do. Just if it's your family and that's one of the main things, make sure that they understand that and make sure that you spend time trying to help in those areas to develop that. Um, your team, all right, yourself, your health, all these other things. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of little things that when you kind of wind down, uh, these are the important things, and just try to be good at that and then handle the other stuff um, and utilize the people around you to do that. And, you know, to me, I think over a course of time, um, <clears throat> and this is my 10th year as a head coach, you know, there's a lot. I've worked with great people. Um, I've been around and, and been a part of great programs. Um, and so I feel fortunate for that. But there's a lot, there's a lot to take away from that and apply to, to what we're doing now. Um, so we can go on forever. I mean, this is, this is a topic that is, is something that, that I'm really into, is just, you know, that improvement, right? And for, think about our players. they got a lot going on. And, and there's, there's so many things for them to do, but in the reality, all right, try to keep the main thing the main thing. This is an experience that they get to have. It's not a career, it's an experience. So get your degree, all right? That's why you came here, get your degree. All right, if you leave here and you don't have it or you're very close to getting it, to me, that's, that's a waste of time, all right? Be a great teammate. <clears throat> so provide value to your team by just being a good person, somebody that somebody wants to talk to and get to know and have a relationship. And then try to get on the field. Try to start. Try to contribute to your team winning. Try to win a championship. All right? Try to make memories that way. Um, do things in the community. Develop yourself. Learn as much as you can. Uh, have as many resources when you leave here as possible. And then, you know, whatever you do next, you can lean back on, on Auburn and they're going to be there for you if you've done those things along the way. And so, and that's also going to lead you, in, in my opinion, to where you're going next, which is really what we're all trying to do. Like, what's the next thing, right? I'm working on this, but there's always going to be something next, hopefully, that you're working towards. And 
trying to get that message across to our guys, but also living it at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't know if I enjoyed everything. Um, there's really no, let me just say this. All right. There's really no days off or downtime in what we do. All right. Um, and that's the reality of it. There's always something to do. There's always somebody to talk to. There's always somebody to recruit. There's always some film to watch. There's always something to do. And I don't think that's really any different from anybody else's jobs either. You probably all have something to do. All right. You, you probably have right now in your in your emails. All right. Plenty of stuff to catch up on. Right. We all have things to do, um, but you got to prioritize your time a little bit and not just mine, but also my family's or my wife's time. And, and you know, there's there's also other people in my life that need time to recharge, too, because they go through this as well. It's not just me. Our families go through it. And it's not just my family, our coaches, families, everybody goes through this. And. In the reality of things, like you need time to recharge. And so for me, um, you know, that, that was a time um, that things were happening, but it was also a time for me that I wanted to make sure that, that my wife and, and the time that we had already planned to have, that she could recharge and, you know, that we could do some things that we already planned. Because there's always, there's always something that can take you away from it. And you just got to make decisions that you're going to prioritize this and do it. Um, and, and that's what you do. So, you know, to me, over a period of time, you get to a point where it's like, look, you, you kind of know how this thing's going to work, and you just got to prioritize some things. Like, what's important? He just asked, right? What's important? Family's important. So if family's important, then I'm going to prioritize that. And, you know, I'll deal with the other things because I promise you they're going to be there, right? They're going to be there whether you're there. They're going to be there whether you're here. Uh, it doesn't matter. They're going to be there. So, um, but the other part of it too, you know, we also knew what, what the truth was. We also knew, all right, what, what was happening. So part of that, that does, that's the untold story that, you know, we knew that as well. So during that time. Brian Matthews. <clears throat> yes, Brian Matthews, AuburnSports.com. Yep. Uh, coach is a safety position in an area where a freshman like Caleb Wooden could come in, step up, and uh, make a big move this spring. Sure he could. Yeah, I think I think every position. Um, that's the one thing about spring. You know, you, you're coming in here to to really earn a spot through these 15 practices, and I think that goes for everybody because that's that's what it should be. Um, you're going to have some guys that have played a lot of years, and you're going to have guys that are pretty known as starters and all that. But but you're also um, I think you're you're not going to get the best out of anybody if you go in there and just say, well, this is how it is, and you're not going to get a chance to compete. Whoever the best players are, like if they earn it and they're the best players and they're the ones we feel most comfortable with and they can go out there and make the plays necessary uh, that we need them to make, um, the necessary plays we need them to make, and, and the players feel good about those guys on the field too and there's some chemistry, then those are going to be the ones that play. So absolutely he could come in. He's, just, you know, he's, he's got to learn it and he's got to spend time like any other player developing himself. Uh, not just on the field, but off the field, and how you prepare to go out there and, and play a whole season and, and be effective. Mark? Yeah, Mark. <clears throat> Every spring you've got a new team and you try to build chemistry with the players. You also have a different look at the staff this year. How important is it to build chemistry in that group? Well, it's always been important. You know, I, I would say this finally, it feels like we went and did paintballing, for example, right? We got a chance to go do that. Uh, normally, that would be something that we would do when we got here. And, I, and I'll just go back. I mean, it just it, flat out, COVID was, it was hard. It was hard to do all the things that you normally want to do. I mean, have people over to your house. Can't do that because there might be somebody that gets COVID. There might be a breakout, right? Can't go on a staff retreat. Can't go do this. Can't have people here. Can't go do an event there. It's too many people. Um, I mean, you guys all went. We all went through it. So when you're trying to build chemistry on a team, and you got 120 guys, you got 100 or almost 215, 230 people in this building, um, and you're not able to go do those things, it makes it difficult. So you had to, you had to find ways to um, be creative in building that chemistry. But it's not the same. Just like we're sitting here face-to-face, -face, 
it's completely different. I'm talking to families through Zoom. We're talking to players through Zoom. We've got new players that sign that we don't even know. We're Zooming with them. We can't go see them. Um, so we went and paintballed. We did paintballing. All right, and that was a really, really good idea until the last game when the whole team decided that the coaching staff were the enemies. <laughs> All right, so we retreated. I'll just say that. But we had a good time. We want to do more of those events. We want to go be able to, uh, to break out and go have people over, to have dinners, to, to be able to do things normally. Uh, but as far as the staff goes, yeah, you want to have chemistry with the staff. You want to get to know people on the staff. Uh, you want your players to spend time with coaches on the staff. You want to spend time with your players. And um, you don't always get to do that as much as you want to. And so as we sit in here in meetings and we spend time together as a team, <clears throat> that's part of that relationship. That's part of what I think uh, everybody has to value is that time. But, you know, we're able to do more of that. So um, that's a premium, you know, just on building the chemistry of the team because when it comes down to it, that's what's going to separate a lot of teams is just how they feel about each other. Do they trust each other? Um, where they're in the locker room, are they talking positively? Are they, are they going to, as they're getting ready for the game, are they going to be thinking in their minds, we're going to go out there and get after these guys? Or is it negative? You know, and we've had a little bit of both. You know, so as we move forward now, all right, that's the past. If we move forward now, all right, we want to have that type of locker room and chemistry on this team that we can go out there for four quarters and we can play hard and we can trust the guy to our left and right. We can enjoy what we're doing because of who we're with and then we'll see what the results are at the end of the day. Tom. <clears throat> Well, a lot like Schmetting, I mean, he brings a lot of detail. <clears throat> you know, Keese is a guy that, um, one, he understands what we want to do offensively. Um, I enjoy working with him as well because he's, he's, he's very low ego, high output. That's what he is. Uh, and he's, he's all into the organization of really every single thing that we do. Every single day, where guys stand. I mean, he's got where guys stand at practice. He's got how we're going to communicate from the sideline onto the field, how we're going to operate. Um, how the meeting's going to be run in here. We're going to spend five, seven minutes as a group. We're going to move on to our individual meetings. Um, he just does a great job of planning. And then, you know, he's also a guy, too. I mean, he's a, he's a football junkie. He loves, he loves watching uh, just practices. He loves watching other teams. He loves watching things to help us get better and find new ways. And, uh, but he's, he's easy to work with, and I think he's, he's very, has a very high standard. But he's a guy you can sit in there and have a conversation with, bring an idea up, and he's going to listen to it. He's going to process it and see if it fits. And if it's the best thing for us, then Coach Keesaw is going to add that into what we need to be doing. And that's what I think makes a successful coordinator is if something is going to make us better, then you add that in. If you've got to pull something out, you pull something out. All right, but you utilize the people that are around you. You develop the people that are around you as a coordinator. Um, you make it very clear on the vision and direction of where we want to go, and then everybody knows the expectation. And then you're able to go out there and just coach a practice, know what's going to happen. We make mistakes, correct them, move on, and then have another plan for the next day. So I think very much like, like Schmetting, that's, that's how he operates. Jay. Yeah, I'm Jake Tate, Brian. Um, had I gone through like the last two or three months you went through, specifically January, I would be a very bitter person. Um, are you bitter about some of the stuff that went down there? <laughs> no, I mean, it, there was a lot of things that happened. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really see the value at this point of like looking back and uh, in the rearview mirror. You know, I mean, it's, I'm a guy that, that wants to move forward, that wants to get better, that wants to keep improving. I mean, that's just how I operate. Now, there's other people involved. My family's involved. There's other people involved. There's other families involved and all that. Um, I'm not saying they have to operate like I do, right? right. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, there's, something, there's something about um, believing in, in, in the things that you do. Um, and, and knowing that, hey, this is, this is going to help us, this is going to get us better. Um, 
and being around other people that, that also feel that way too. You know, the one thing to me, I guess for me is, is if you want to go back and, and look back on some of the things that happened, I also took a ton of positive out of it as well. All right. As, as much as there were some negative things, there was probably, there was not probably, there was more positive. I saw players on our team step up and lead. Talk about player driven. Like you can talk about it all day and until you're thrown into that situation, until you have to come out and actually stand on your two feet and say something, um, you never know. And I saw players do that. I saw players set up meetings to go meet with people, to have conversations about, all right, our program. Um, and I saw guys that decided to come back here for that reason, to be in that position. Uh, I saw coaches do the same thing. Felt that, um, got a lot of emails and mail and support and saw that from, you know, a lot of people that, uh, that support Auburn. So I guess, you know, there, there's some things that, you know, what happened, um, you know, I wouldn't say that anybody really wants to go through that, but at the same time, I also saw some things that were really, really positive and saw support and saw people come out and just stand up and talk about Auburn, talk about this program, talk about uh, the things that we're doing and know that we're moving in the right direction. Do you feel like that treachery is still out there? Um, I, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not looking for it. Well, yeah, I, I guess um, I, not, not necessarily that. Let me just say this. I mean, people in, in, in our world of recruiting and all that, and, and perception, all those things like that. I mean, just pick something of the day, right? That's really what it comes down to. Pick something of the day, and that's what somebody's going to use. And, and there's a lot of programs and people out there that have no problem doing that. Um, I don't feel that way. I really don't. There's a, there's a lot of people that don't. Now, we battle it, and we're going to battle it every day. We're going to overcome one, and there's going to be another. We're going to overcome another and another. And another. Just, it's going to be a constant uh, battle. Of of what other people have to say, and it's like that at um no, no, not like this. Yeah, not like this. Um, this is different, you know. But I, I don't think it's necessarily just Auburn. I think it's it's other programs too. But I also think um, what's happened in college football is different from when I was at Boise. So the times have changed. I mean, now you got all these other ways to recruit players and to promote your program. And, and some people are using it for good. Some people are using it for evil. I mean, you, you know, that's what I'm, it's just pick your poison and how you want to do things. Uh, so, no, again, look, we're going we're gonna to talk about our program. We're going to talk about the things that we do. We're going to try to get guys to come here because they want to be a part of Auburn football. And let me just say this. There's a lot of guys out there that want to be here. And there's a lot of families that want their sons to be here because they want them to be a part of a program like we have. And they want their, their sons to be a part of uh, the things that we believe in, like getting your degree, working hard, being a good person, giving back to the community, doing things the right way, treating people the right way. All right? I mean, those type of things, like that stuff still matters. And... You know, I, I think, I think some people, um, you know, they just they 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 take it too far. <clears throat> they take it too far, and you know what the problem is? They got no problem with that. That's the problem. We'll take a few more, John. Hey, Coach Jonathan Hoppy here with WTVM. Just kind of speaking about some of that support you received. I mean, a lot of people, some even came up to to report <clears throat> to, to back you and, and to try to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate you. And so do our players and so do our coaches and, and everybody that's a part of this football program. They really do. And I, I would say this, even beyond that, um, I thought there were some really, really productive conversations that we had. Um, and look, like, you know, talking about, you know, what did you learn? Like, there's always things that I learn. You, you, don't, you don't just go through things and not take something out of it. You don't just go through things and, and then it's just business as usual. 
that's, that's not how, in my opinion, things work. Like you learn things, you grow, you develop, and that should be every single one of us. That's not just our players and uh, people that we lead. So I thought we had really productive conversations. I thought support was a big part of that and why we had that. And I also think it has helped us just understand, like we all need to be pulling in the same direction. All right, for, for Auburn football in particular, uh, we all need to be pulling in the same direction, all right? And in this case, like, there's, there's no point, like, somebody won something or somebody lost something when it comes to Auburn. You know, this isn't Auburn versus Auburn. This is all of us pulling in the same direction, everybody aligned, and, and trying to help build this football program um, and put it in a position where we all want it. We all want to play for championships. We all want to win. We all want to graduate every player. We all want to have a great experience. Um, and we're all going that same direction, people are going to want to be a part of that. If we're not going that same direction, people don't want to be a part of that. And I thought the support, people going to Tumor's Corner, I thought what people said, um, that made a huge difference. Because that type of stuff is what people see. A lot of people see that. You know, we know like the inner workings and all that, but a lot of people see that. And when they see that, uh, they want to be a part of those things. They want to be a part of a program or where people believe in what they're doing. I think everybody wants to be a part of that. So to me, like, that's the key to success. When everybody's pulling the same direction, look, we're going to have plenty of things that, that we're not going to agree on when it comes to the game, right? Decision making, why'd you do this, why'd you do that? That's all part of it. We all signed up for that. But as far as loving Auburn and loving this program and wanting to see this football team, this university succeed, you know, we need that type of support. And when we get that, then you're going to have the players and the people that want to be a part of that. And when you get the right people, then you have a chance to be successful. Yeah, I, I wanted Shed back. Yeah, no, no question about it. I want to Shed back. I think Shed's best football is ahead of him. Um, he had a year in the system. He got to learn. Um, he had a couple different coaches. You know, he's got another one now, and and Ike is is great. Ike's been a great addition to the staff. Um, he's a pro, and and understands you know what it needs to look like. He's coached uh, NFL players. He's been at the highest level. You know, he's he's he himself played at the highest level, and you know that's been a great addition to that room. But having a guy back, having a guy like Shed back, Shed's a leader. Shed's got qualities about him that I thought we got a chance to see last year a little bit, but we're going to see more this year. And so you want him back because his best football is ahead of him, and then who he is as a person, that's exactly who we want in this program. VAR, uh, getting him back out there, VAR was very productive last year. Should have been more productive and could have been. Uh, and that's not his fault. You know, that's, that's what, you know, we, we're a part of that as a coaching staff. We've got to help our players out too, and he's – He's done some really good things. So to get him back and get him out there, um, it gives some more experience to that wide receiver room. And it helps with the, the coaching change, for sure, because those guys have played. And I also think that there's a maturity level, uh, especially with Shed, that he brings to that room where it's going to help those guys develop and just really take – um, what they're doing in the meetings more serious and more focused. And you see it like in um, Tavares Dawson is a great example of that. You know, he's, he's very talented, but his whole demeanor, his whole focus has changed. I think that has to do with that room and guys like Shed and leaders in that room and Malcolm and some of the guys that played for us have really helped some of those young guys out. Coach, last question. Yeah, finish strong, right? Um, that's one thing. And, and that's always, look, you want to win every game. We didn't like the way we finished. Uh, nobody did. Um, but that's the key. If you're going to make a run, if you're going to make a run, you're going to play for something at the end of the year, you got to finish. You have to finish. Uh, at the same time, I think through the season, um, 
there were plenty of things that were self-inflicted that we'll learn from and get better at, and we can coach it better. Uh, and then at the same time, too, I think um, just, you know, this, this league, um, you got to be ready to play every single week. And, and our guys know that, but um, what did I learn? I mean, you, you know that in every, every league you play in, but especially, you know, as, as you're playing for championships and you're trying to play at the highest level, which is the SEC, um, you know, everything you do matters, in my opinion. Sundays through Friday, it all matters. And then Saturdays is really, you know, the results of all that work. And it should be the best day of the week for you as a player because you get to go out there and cut it loose and play. There's no coaches on the field with you. It's just you and the other 10 guys out there and you're playing ball, which is what we all love to do. But you got to finish. And so all the little things in practice, all the little things in meetings, all those things will show up. Uh, and we're going to get better at that. We'll coach it better. We'll emphasize it better. Um, I thought our guys played hard. And I'll go back to this will be the last thing we'll talk about from last year. But <clears throat> I'll go back to last year's team. We played in the Iron Bowl and how hard our guys played, how hard they fought, all the things they did right. It didn't go our way. But that right there, um, we, were, we were very proud of how the team came out and competed. And so, you know, we've got we to take what we learned from that and apply it to what we're doing moving forward. And we got a lot of those guys back. Uh, I, I think we have other guys that are adding a lot of value to this team. We're going to bring other guys in eventually because uh, we need to. But they got to come in and provide value to what we're doing and, and where we're trying to go. And, and our guys, more importantly than what I learned, I think our players learned that too. And our guys that came back, there's a reason why they came back. They believe in what we're doing. They believe in each other. And they believe that we can be successful. And I do, too. I got no doubt in my mind. Uh, what I saw today, um, it's, it's not just your typical spring practice and all that. I mean, guys were out there working. Plenty to clean up, plenty to get better at and all that. But as far as the vibe goes and as far as just the, uh, the energy of the team, that was brought by the team. That was brought by the players. And I think there's a reason why, you know, those guys did come back, reason why guys that we signed that are going to be a part of this program, several, several guys of, are, are there right now. Um, and so, and the guys that are coming in the summer that want to be a part of this, um, we get them here. Um, they're going to add value to what we're doing. So uh, to me, it's, you know, hey, take what we learned last year. You got to finish. You got to prepare. You got to have yourself ready every single week. But um, I think a lot of guys see that and they're excited about where this program's headed. Coach, thank you for your time. Okay, all right. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.